nice D. Okay, no, so <laughs> uh, hopefully this video will be a little bit louder than the last one. Um, I got a lot of comments saying that the last video was pretty quiet. So uh, I wanna make sure that this one you can hear me. Speaking of comments, thank you, thank you everyone who left a comment, a like, subscribed to the channel. I was a little bit blown away by the response to this. So uh, thank you all. Uh, for that. With that said, um, I want to just give you a little update on where things are. I got um, my delivery of the motion picture miniatures galaxy class uh, upgrade kit. I think this is going to be really, really cool to, uh, to use. To upgrade everything so um, you can see here there's quite a few parts in there um, I won't necessarily go into all the the details of what all these are um, I'll link down below so you can go see what all the various pieces are but there's just um, some really nice cl clear plastic uh, resin and they're really I mean they're, they're really sturdy pieces one in particular, though, that I wanted to talk about is this replacement part for the dorsal uh, part of the neck. So here is the kit version of that. But yeah, so this is um, this piece here came in the uh, replacement kit. It separates out the main impulse engine so that it's easier to light uh, and light block separately from the rest of the dorsal part. That being said, the main impulse engine, I'm going to do a little bit of work on this. Firstly, I am not for certain, but it came with this little sliver of just a little like edge, plastic edge sliver there, which was attached to the front of the part, sort of like that. I thought this was flash that needed to be taken off. Uh, I'm second guessing that now, thinking that it was actually kind of a little lip that protrudes out past the engine a little bit, but either way, it just kind of flaked off when I when I touched it. So I I just trimmed it all the way off. Um, and what I think I'm gonna do instead is kind of recess in a little bit into the piece, and then. I can find it. Oh, it's right in front of me. Uh, take the actual kit part, which has the little grill lines in it uh, for the engine, and try and sort of inlay that in there so that it retains those grid lines. Because on the on the replacement part here, that doesn't have that. But if you look on the studio model there is, you can definitely see those grid lines, and there is a sort of a black border around the inside of the engine as well. So I think if I try and inset that in there and add that black border, it's going to come out looking really nice. So that's my plan for main impulse. In other news, windows. I think I've cracked the Windows <laughs> uh, issue here. I used this piece, like I said before, as a test, and I tried out a few different methods. First thing I tried was by using a wood burner that had a little skinny attachment on it that I thought maybe I could just melt out those windows. It basically just 
melted the whole plastic and just made everything gooey <laughs> and just misshapen. And so that quickly became not an option. Uh, I tried the same thing then with a safety pin and just heating it up. The problem with this is that you get like half a second to poke it in and try and make that window before the thing cools down enough that it doesn't do any good. And it has kind of the same issue as the wood burner tool did of just making it mushy and it kind of leaves this raised grossness to it. Then tried finally, and this is where the magic happens, the heated exacto blade method, which works like a charm for these teeny tiny, 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 tiny windows. I don't know how well you can see that, but there's a row of three little windows there that I was able to cut out using a heated exacto blade, which is skinny enough to fit into those windows. And as you plunge it down in, it opens up that space very nicely. And it's accurate enough that you can get super tight together, little clusters like that. Little spaces in between those windows of plastic still. So you retain those borders. There's a little bit of cleanup afterwards, but it basically makes that elongated shape uh, and it's a really nice method, and I'm sure probably all of you are like, duh doy, that's how you're supposed to do it. But it took me a little bit of trial and error to figure it out. So, but I, I'm caught up now. Here we are. So yeah, an exacto blade. And the other thing that, I, that I've been using too is this little, it's a little like eye, eyeglass size screwdriver. So it's got this little tiny end on it that fits those windows pretty perfectly and I kind of stick this in there and wiggle it around a little bit and it just cleans out the rest of that plastic real nicely into that shape and it's the way to go. So if you have any thoughts about that uh, let me know otherwise um, I think this is how I'm going to how I'm gonna go with it. Um, so thank you to the back of this piece for being my test kitchen, as it were. I'm gonna keep using this for testing paint um, and all the rest. So that's where we are right now. I've got a lot of windows to cut. I don't know how long that's gonna take me, so this might be uh, the only video <laughs> from me for a while till all those windows are done. Um, but that's gonna, I think, be my first step here is to do windows and then we'll be back with more next time. Hope to see you then. Thanks, bye.